Hi, everyone. Happy Thursday. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm going to do my best Scott impression. Everybody's shuffling into the classroom. Go ahead and pick a seat. I'm sure only Scott is the one laughing right now. Scott and maybe myself. That's okay. I make myself laugh all the time. Welcome, everybody. Like we got a good group today. I'll give everybody else just a minute to kind of hop on and then we'll go ahead and get started. Today we're talking about gifts. They do make the world go round, uh, but we're gonna be looking at kind of some of the, the finer details of gift entry and really some of the kind of nuances of doing gift processing in Virtuous and really just some kind of tips and tricks to help everything go smoothly. You know, this is something you all are probably doing you know, very consistently every day. So it's something you're very familiar with. So hopefully you you leave today with, you know, a, a few little kind of nuggets of wisdom, if you will. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. So welcome everyone to today's Virtuous Insider. Uh, today we're talking about gifts, like I mentioned. Let's see. First things first, we are recording today. And as soon as uh, we are done, we're gonna pop this into the Virtuous Support Center. Remember, you can always get there from our website or from the little mortar board cap in the top right hand side of Virtuous. You can always pop over. We're always adding new content. Uh, we have the entire Virtuous Insider series on there as far as webinars go, uh, but we always have support articles and all kinds of fun things. We are muting everybody, so if you do have a question, go ahead and toss it into the chat, or you can use the uh, Q, or excuse me, if you have a comment, toss it into the chat, but if you have a question, please put it into the Q&A feature. Um, Scott and I are switching roles today, so I am going to be running the show, and he is going to be running the chat and the Q&A, so go ahead, now's your time, blast him with all kinds of questions. But welcome. Uh, my name is Stephanie Larson. I am the product trainer here at Virtuous. Um, and I'm joined by Scott, our director of training. Um, and like I mentioned, we're touching base on all things gifts today. So we're going to go ahead and dive right on in. Bear with me one second. Let me go ahead and swap out my screen. We're diving right into Virtuous. Awesome. Okay, so for today, I wanted to cover a few kind of pieces of gift entry. And now I know that we're all, you know, representing different organizations and we're all probably utilizing uh, Virtuous slightly different as far as the cadence of when we, you know, add gifts and the level of detail and the, even the types of gifts that we add. You know, perhaps you don't accept pledges, perhaps you have a plethora of recurring gifts, things like that. So I want to kind of start a little bit broad and then we'll narrow down into kind of some fun little things about gift entry. But we are going to just hop right on in to our gift and contact import tool. Now, from here, the very first thing I always want to touch base and make sure that everybody remembers is a great resource is our import templates. Now, this is our gift and contact import tool so we can do contact imports or we can do gift imports. Um, we can also do gift imports where we add a few contacts and things like that. So there's all kinds of different uh, pieces of the gift and contact import tool, but today we're talking specifically gift entry. But remember, you can always utilize these templates, format them you know, with the types of fields that you get from any kind of giving in a, or uh, giving platform or something like that. So that way, really doing gift entry is very quick. You format the template once and then you can pop that information over or like we're gonna do today, you can always manually enter all of your gifts. And uh, Scott, I do think that at some point we should probably do a race. Not today, we'll have to do this another time um, and let everyone know, number one, who's faster at gift entry, you or I, and number two, we might have to do a race to see if the template is faster or if manual entry is faster. Um, 
just based on on you and I. I think that'd be kind of a fun thing. What do you think? And also, hi, I didn't even say hello. Hi. Oh, that's okay. You were just off to the races. Yeah, I'm always down for a race. I think we'll have to invite the uh, we'll have to invite some of the insider folks though to come be spectators on that. We'll have Team Stephanie, Team Scott. We'll see who wins. Obviously, Team Stephanie. But uh, yeah, I, I do always uh, laugh because I think manual entry of gifts is faster. I am not an Excel gal. However, I think there's a huge benefit to having the template kind of formatted and structured for certain types of gifts that we're you know, exporting from other systems or other giving platforms, things like that. Um, but we are definitely going to have to do a, uh, a race one day. Um, okay, so for today, like I said, we are going to manually enter some gifts. So I'm going to just go ahead and make a new import here. So I'm going to go ahead and keep it on the gift. Remember, you can always do contact imports as well. And today we're going to enter gifts manually. But don't forget, you can always save yourself a few clicks if you're using any of the default features here. If you have a stack of mostly checks or a stack of mostly bags of cash, you can just kind of set that default piece um, and then change it for those individual gifts as you go. So for today, I've got mostly checks here. Um, and then the default gift date, again, remembering that this is just kind of this, this standard one, you can always change it for the individual gift. Um, any kind of default marketing segment, perhaps you're doing an entire batch of gifts that are specifically related to uh, a campaign that's running or an event you just had, something like that, so where the gift is coming from. And if there's a specific template that you want to give everybody on this gift to, that's, we're actually going to be talking about um, receding as our entire hour of our training webinar um, in a few weeks. So we'll talk a lot more about receipts and receipt templates and receiving groups and all kinds of things. But just don't ever forget that this default stuff here is really just to save you some clicks as you go. And one thing um, I do want to really quickly mention is today, you know, we're, we're making up, I've got a stack of fake checks in front of me that we're going to be adding and entering in here, but you can always utilize your batch total kind of as a uh, double check when you are doing a gift import to help keep you on track, make sure there's no kind of keystroke error or, you know, fat fingers going through and typing the wrong number. If you know your batch should equal X amount of dollars, go ahead and toss it on in. Um, and then as you're entering gifts, once you, you know, hit that amount and your batch is complete, you can import, but it's just a good kind of uh, double check feature, if you will. So once you've created the import, starting kind of here where we have our three buckets of gifts where we have a match needed. Oops, sorry, my little... Uh, uh, menu bar popped up on me there, uh, gifts where we have an update needed, and then our gifts that are ready for import. So these numbers are going to kind of change and fluctuate as we go and as we enter gifts, um, gifts that might need, you know, an update or things like that. So we are going to go ahead and just jump on in. All right. Oops. Sorry, everybody clicked on my PowerPoint instead. All right, so the very first thing I actually wanna show you, this is kind of tucked away only because it's not something that you always need, but it's a great reference point. So we actually have quick keys and I, I probably shouldn't tell Scott this if we are gonna race on entering later uh, or another time, but we have quick keys. So you can really kind of just zoom through gift entry um, and just kind of be manually plugging all of your gifts in very quickly. So if you wanna take a peek at those, if they're, that's kind of new to you, up in our actions tab here, you can actually see some of the quick key commands we have here. And I do also wanna just invite all of you on your own to say quick keys five times fast, it's very difficult. Um, but this is just kind of, again, some little things that will help you move through gift processing a little bit quicker. So within a virtuous gift entry, if you're utilizing virtuous giving, 
you also have the option in the actions button up here to process a credit card directly from here. Now, this is going to include that gift um, from that credit card as a part of this import. Um, so this is a great way where if you do have someone on the phone, uh, you know, a, a repeat giver or donor you're familiar with, you could just process something through for them very quickly, uh, just as a quick little thing that's kind of tucked away. So I want to first start out when we are creating a gift, um, we're adding a new gift, and we want to add a contact record that has two individuals on it. Now, traditionally, when we're adding a gift, it's going to be, you know, the name of the person on the check that's giving it to us. But what if we happen to know two members of that, you know, family, we have two individuals within a contact record. So I have a gift here from Donald and Daisy Duck. So Oh, I happen to have a Donald Duck here. Perfect. We can go ahead and select him and add his gift. I want to take a peek at his gift in a little bit. We'll come back to Donald here. Let's save this one. Now I also have a gift from Chip and Dale. Oh, I don't have a Chip. I don't. Let me see if I've got a Dale in here some Dales, but not the squirrels I'm talking about. No, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new contact record for Chip and Dale. But again, I've got both Chip and Dale that I happen to know are a part of this contact record. So we'll go ahead and start with Chip. I don't actually know Chip and Dale's last name. Chip Squirrel works for me, though. Got an email address, perfect. Oops. I could make this contact record, but I also have the ability, like I said, I wanna add both Chip and Dale as a part of this gift entry kind of piece. So I can actually go ahead on the secondary individual here and just add Dale as well. Now I'm only gonna be creating the one contact record, but I'm gonna be creating both Chip and Dale as individuals can't type squirrel and talk at the same time. Um, and got to give Dale an email as well. Now for this gift from Chip and Dale, um, you'll notice that since I put Chip in first, he is going to be our primary individual on this record. Dale will be our secondary individual. So I can go ahead and click create. And again, you'll notice that Chip is the only individual kind of listed on here so far. We've got to let Virtuous do its thing and actually create everybody. So we've got a check from Chip and Dale, a very generous $100. Now I have a setting turned on in my sandbox where I am requiring all gifts to be attributed to a marketing se segment and to a project. So I'm making sure that all of my gifts have a dedicated place they came from and a place that they are going. So a con or excuse me, a campaign segment and a project. So I'm going to go ahead and just put in default for mine. Not quite sure where this gift from Chippendale came from, but it is going to go to the home at last project. I'm doing some building renovations. And we're putting all $100 of this gift there. So I'm going to go ahead and save and continue. Now we're going to come back to that Chip and Dale gift here. But that's just one of the first things I want to kind of touch base on is, is, again, we have the ability to add two individuals when we are creating a gift. Now the next thing that I want to kind of touch base on is premiums. Now let's go ahead. I've got Minnie Mouse here. Now, Minnie Mouse already exists in my system. Perfect. Let's go ahead. Minnie gave a $50 gift. Um, and this gift is actually going to be attributed to a run walk that we have going on. So she's going to get a t-shirt as a part of this gift. So we do have premiums down here. Let me actually quickly put in her uh, project. And I apologize, I skipped it. There we go, our default segment. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach the t-shirt in for Minnie Mouse's gift. 
And now one of the things that I wanted to touch base on also was there is a setting in Virtuous where you have the ability to auto decrement gifts, or excuse me, premiums when they're attached to a gift. So if you have, you know, 10 shirts available, I'm going to give Minnie Mouse one of these shirts for this gift as a part of the uh, kind of piece that she's getting for the gift. That will tell Virtuous. Now, when I go look at my premiums, go ahead and take that number of 10 shirts. Even though I haven't put it in the mail yet or haven't given it to Minnie Mouse, go ahead and take that shirt out of inventory. So I have an accurate amount of premium kind of count based on the number that I'm doing in here for gifts. Um, T-shirt, let's go ahead. We've got one for Minnie Mouse. So from here, again, I've got that setting turned on. So my premiums are going to kind of auto decrease as I do my gift entry. So looks good there. Now, the next thing I want to do is I'm actually going to, you know, leave Disneyland for a minute and head on over to Pawnee, Indiana, where we're going to be talking about some of our next kind of uh, givers here, some of our next donors. I want to take a look at recurring gifts. So I have Leslie Nope, who has uh, said that she's going to be giving a gift uh, frequently, she set up kind of a recurring gift in our online form. And that first payment that I get for it, I want to, I've already created the recurring gift. This is really the second payment, excuse me, not first, but the second payment that came in from Leslie Nope. So I want to make sure that I'm not just adding a gift and starting a new recurring kind of um, time frame, I want to make sure that I'm acknowledging the recurring gift that a donor already has set up. So let's go ahead, our dear Leslie Nope. So with our Leslie Nope, a few things right here. On her recent gifts, I can take a quick peek and say, okay, she's given, looks like a large gift here. Um, and then eh, this was about a month apart. Maybe she has some kind of a recurring gift of $50 on there. It's not exactly, you know, a month apart or anything, but just taking a look and kind of taking pause to see some of the recent gifts on her account that can help me kind of identify what I might be doing with this new gift. And also, before I actually jump over, I do also want to point out important note right here. This is something you don't see on every contact record, but this is telling me that this contact record, Leslie Nope and Ben Wyatt, they have a note on their record that is marked as important. Now, we've all seen those when we're on the donor record itself, that kind of big red box at the very, very top. But did you know, or did you even notice that it happens in gift entry as well? So this is a really great tool, especially, so for this example, Ben does not like to be called Benjamin, but that is probably how his bank account is set up. So if we were to get a gift from Benjamin Wyatt, this little note here is just a really good kind of identifier or um, checkpoint for me, if you will, to realize that Ben is Benjamin, but he just prefers to be called Ben. So just wanted to touch on that really quick. All right. So we've got our gift from Leslie Nope. I'm gonna use our default segment. And I wanna just kind of bring up, I mentioned that again, I'd seen $50 kind of frequently for Leslie. She has some recurring gifts here. Now, knowing Leslie's record, I'm very familiar that she has a $50 gift kind of set up to go out um, every week for the default project. But I wanted to show you on her recurring gift tab here, excuse me, not tab, drop down. This top portion is letting me know what types of things, what types of kind of gifts she has active. Now it looks like we have a bunch of perhaps past due payments. So I don't know if, you know, Leslie has been out of town, she's chosen to do something else with her funds. This is a great kind of point where I could look at this record and say, oh, I really should touch base with Leslie. Looks like she's, 
you know, set up recurring gifts, but it doesn't look like we've been um, either getting them or applying them. But that kind of piece right there is telling because number one shows that I need to touch base with Leslie, but it also shows that we really should take a peek at her record and make sure that we are not as a gift entry team, just not attributing her gifts to the recurring gift. So it's really telling regardless, whether it's something where we need to look and take a peek systematically, if there's something that we need to be doing, perhaps my team doesn't know that they need to be applying payments or gifts to um, kind of a recurring schedule, if that's the case, or perhaps Leslie really has stopped making this recurring gift and this is a great point for me to reach out and check in with her. So we've got a bunch of past due ones, but I wanna show you, we're gonna go ahead, uh, 17th, 19th, we're pretty close. So let's go ahead and just apply her gift to her next recurring payment. And we'll take a peek at what that looks like on Leslie's record. We could also say if none of these payments were applicable, we didn't wanna assign this gift to any of these past payments, we wanna make a new one, but we've got one coming up in just a few days. So we'll apply it to that. So from here, <clears throat> excuse me, we are saying that for this new gift we have of $50, we're really just applying it to this recurring gift as opposed to setting a new one. And this recurring gift is already assigned a project. So we don't need to put in a new project in a split amount. We're saying that instead, this $50, we normally put in a project in a split amount, it's really just a payment for this gift we already have existing. But we are going to put in the actual applied amount because we could also have a bigger gift than just this payment and apply it to another piece of um, another project or another kind of piece of the puzzle, if you will. So we'll go ahead and Virtuous is always going to, you know, start to recognize the trends of what you're doing and recommend kind of next steps. So Virtuous is saying, okay, we have one recurring gift. Might there be another? We'll go ahead and save and continue for now. We'll come back to Leslie in a bit. Now, the next gift we have here is a gift um, where Ann Perkins has let us know that this is actually a pledge payment that she is making. We'll pull up Ann. Now, Ann Perkins, very much like Leslie, she's she's a proud supporter of the Pawnee Parks Department. Uh, Leslie has set up a recurring gift to just kind of be consistently giving every you know uh, week or so that smaller gift. But Ann has said, you know what? I'm going to actually make a big pledge and and pay that in installments, pay that over a period of time. So now, for Ann Perkins, I want to take a peek down here at the pledge payment option. That's going to look very similar because in Virtuous, a recurring gift and a pledge, the structure of them is very much the same. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're taking a gift and applying it as a payment to a future gift, which could be a recurring gift or it could be a pledge, a promise of the gift, something like that. So for Anne, I want to take a peek and say, wow, this, this is a big old kind of list, <clears throat> but you'll see. But instead of all of those kind of um, weekly payments, if you will, Anne has some expected payments due every month. So it looks like we had a $5,000 pledge. Anne said she's going to be pledging this for us, but it's not going to be fulfilled for a couple of years. So she's taking that bigger kind of piece and really putting it into kind of bite-sized gift pieces, if you will. Now, because we have an amount and because we have an expected fulfillment date, Virtuous has done some math for us, which is great because I hate math. Virtuous is letting us know the amount that that payment really is kind of expected to be. That doesn't mean Anne has to give us, you know, $384.62 but to accomplish that entire pledge over the period of time that we were talking about, that does amount to 384.62. So Anne just gave us an ease even, excuse me, 385 today. <clears throat> I apologize, I run a frog in my throat. 
So this gift, this check of $385 is going to be assigned to the pledge of $384.62. So I really need to specify and let Virtuous know that I'm applying the full $385 to this pledge. <coughs> Apologies, everyone. Now, we're going to go ahead and save and continue. We've got another gift here. Lots of gifts today, you guys. Now, the next gift is from Tom and Wendy Haverford. Now, Tom, he is really wonderful. He gives us a very, you know, consistent gift, but it's Tom Haverford, so he does like to be a little particular with, your, with his gift. He gives us $10,000, but tends to give it to the same projects with the same kind of split. Now, it ends up being about five different programs or projects that he's he's helping us fund, but that does make for a lot of kind of manual entry. So one of the things that you can do is copy a recent gift. So now Tom down here, you can see in his recent gift, I do know that he has given a gift very similar to this $10,000 check I have in front of me today with it looks like a whole bunch of project splits on here. So we have a couple of options. We could absolutely manually enter all of the kind of specifications he gave as a part of his gift. I, I see it all here on the check and I really just don't wanna do that because I'd like to save a few clicks. A few clicks always adds up. We can actually copy a past gift. Now, when I do this, you'll notice that on the left-hand side on the gift entry piece, it's gonna take this exact gift the amount and the projects and the, the way it's all kind of organized and categorized and copy that over for me here. So a lot just happened because again, it's, it's Tom Haverford, so he likes to be a little difficult. Not even his gift is evenly split. But of his $10,000 gift, I've got a handful of things. So 7,000 was given of this, this one over down here, 7,000 to Little Sebastian's Memorial Fund, 1,000 to the home at last building renovations, 1,500 just to kind of our general operating, 250 to our parks and recreation preservation project and 250 to child sponsorship. Now, because I copied this gift, I can go ahead and just delete that extra $10,000. Uh, but really, what I'm doing is just saving the kind of structure of the project and the split amount. Of course, if this isn't exact and perhaps he gave, you know, $9,000 on this month's check or something like that, you can always, you know, just modify and make a new, <clears throat> excuse me, a new project and line item for that specific amount. But this looks perfect. This actually saved me a whole bunch of time. This is exactly how he wanted it kind of, um, laid out and split out. So we'll go ahead and save and continue. Now we've already entered quite a few gifts. We've entered six gifts so far and really none of them have been extremely standard, I would say. <coughs> but this next one um, is what I think is, is a kind of a unique one. All of these are not necessarily everyday gift entry, but I would say relatively frequently or, or kind of a consistent thing where you might have someone giving consistently in a pledge or recurring gift. But this next one, we did get a gift from a uh, donor advised fund. So we have in here, Sweetums. Sweetums Foundation has given us a gift. making up check numbers at this point. A very large gift, very generous. And we happen to know the pass-through giver. So I know that Jerry and Gail Gergich gave this gift through their fund at the Sweetums Foundation. So I wanna go ahead and open up this show all gift information down here so I can add the Gergich family as pass-through givers. Now that's, at this point, you're probably saying, Stephanie, I do that all the time. That's not odd at all. But what's kind of unique about this specific gift is Jerry and Gail Gergich have some recurring gifts already committed. 
because this is given through the Sweetums Foundation, in theory, I can just go ahead and enter this gift. However, I do want to recognize the gift that the Gergich family made through the Sweetums Foundation and essentially apply it to their recurring gift. So once I've added the Gergich family as pass-through givers, I now have the ability to apply this gift to a pledge of theirs or a pledge from the direct giver, the Sweetums Foundation, or similarly, a recurring gift from the Sweetums Foundation or a recurring gift from the Gergich household. So from the Gergich household, I know that they happen to have a recurring gift on here. So I want to go ahead and apply a portion of this gift towards these recurring gifts. They have some payments due today. They, however, have a recurring gift that's designated to two specific projects. This is also, I think, a little unique. Most people might just say, I'm giving you a recurring gift for this one thing. The Gergich family likes to be unique as well. So we can do a new payment just for this kind of generic $1,500 recurring gift that happens twice a year, or we can go ahead and specifically apply some of this money to these kind of split payments of the recurring gift. So I'm gonna go ahead and add these bad boys. Now, when we do this on uh, Jerry and Gail's record, we're not going to see this gift as a part of their direct giving. It will be included as their pass-through giving. They are the pass-through giver here. However, it is going to acknowledge that they've made a payment to their recurring gift. And I uh, did one too many zeros earlier. 1,500, excuse me. So we can go ahead and save and continue from here. <clears throat> now, the last thing I wanted to kind of show you was if we have someone that is in our system, but we just want to add a second individual to that record, we can do that in gift entry as well. We all know and love Ron Swanson. Now there's a bunch of Swansons on here, but this gift happens to be from Tammy Swanson. Tammy too, to be specific. But instead of making a new contact record for Tammy, I really just wanna add her as an individual on an already existing contact record. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna choose Ron Swanson, but first I really wanna put in Tammy's name. Because I know at the end of the day, I'm going to add her to Ron's uh, contact record. I need to just make her an individual on there. But I really just want to make sure that we don't have a Tammy Swanson in here. And, you know, I've just spelled it wrong or something like that. So I've put in a first name and a last name for Tammy and for Swanson. And remember, a first name and a last name are the only pieces that are required to make a new contact record. So at this point, Virtuous is showing me over here all of the Swansons because we do have a partial match. It could just be that, you know, somebody's name is uh, updated or using, you know, some new information or something like that. So Virtuous is helping me keep my data clean by recommending even partial matches so I can, you know, kind of be the human element and make the decision. But I'm going to say, okay, I want to add this to Ron Swanson as opposed to creating a new contact record. So from within here, I've chosen Ron Swanson, but when we go through and finish out the gift, you'll see how we're gonna add time, Tammy to this record. Tammy is uh, giving us $200 today. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and save and close because these are all the gifts that I have for today. From these gifts, you've all gotten to this point, I'm sure, where you're like ready to import and you're like, ah, gosh, I got to make an update on something. Remember that Virtuous is always going to split out the matches that you need to make. So if you're doing an import through a file, you're probably going to have a match or two to update. 
we did all of our matching as we were adding all of our gifts. So we don't have any that we need to kind of match together, but we do have some we need to make some changes to. <clears throat> we have a whole host of things we need to make some changes to. Let's see. Remember, you're always gonna see two different colors in your updates needed. Red ones are gonna say there is something that we need systematically to either make a change to, or like this, we just didn't add a segment. Oops, let's go ahead. So Virtuous is helping us keep everything clean. The red ones are gonna be required. We must have this in order to move on. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I also need a project. I should have known that. I've got that setting on. Oh, Donald Duck, gosh darn it, look at me go. But see how every time I'm making a change, Virtuous is stopping me to say, there's more. You didn't get all of the fields. So Virtuous just kind of helped me through that one. Now, Chip and Dale, you'll notice that, remember, we started with Chip as our uh, first kind of individual on this contact record, our primary individual. Virtuous is saying, okay, there's another day or another uh, record on here. Do we want to add him as an individual or did you just goof Stephanie and you added the wrong name or something like that? And this is really just Chip. We can add Dale as an individual record or we can just ignore this. So we're going to go ahead and add Dale. And now again, this is going to take both of those individuals. We added at the same time as a part of this uh, gift entry. Oh, Minnie and Mickey, I forgot to put a split amount in. I forgot to designate the entire $50. Look at all these little things that Virtuous is catching for me. Ooh, Ann Perkins, forgot a marketing segment. But it's a quick kind of a, yeah, that'll work fine quick kind of zoom through of all of these gifts. And as I'm making these changes, you'll notice that all of the update needed uh, kind of pieces, all of those gifts are popping in ready for import. Uh, segment, I needed just a cup of coffee or something. I've forgotten them all. I know this one came in through our interview with Purd. You heard? Now, I did a silly thing because the gift itself, let's see here, our payments must be equal or, or, excuse me, must equal or be less than the gift itself. I didn't apply enough here. Ledge payments, here we go. Oh, gosh, what have I done? Pledge and recurring gift payments must equal or be less than the gift itself. Might have to come back to that one. I'm not quite sure if I'm just not doing math correctly. Go ahead, we'll have to pop back into this one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, gosh. It's time for the afternoon cup of coffee. Scott, I need your eyeballs. What am I missing? Oh, pledge. There we go. Yeah, it looks like the payments are being applied twice to either a pledge or a recurring gift on this contact record as well as on the pass through contact. So that's the kind of thing you get when you have some of the sort of fake sandbox data. Yeah. Looks like we've got the same recurring gift on the contact and the pass-through contact at the same time. Oh, oops. What happens when you live in a fictional place like Pawnee, Indiana? Yeah, that's the difficulty with not having right. the real world example, but some of the fake world examples. So you can see we've got it oh. applied to Jerry and Gales and to just a regular old recurring gift. So here we go. Okay, let's just see. We're just gonna make that a, a simple kind of gift there. Thank you, Scott. I would have been looking for a minute. But see, even though I couldn't <laughs> originally find it, we're just is gonna stop me and say, hang on. Uh, 
<laughs> something funny here. Now from in here, when I added this Tammy onto Ron, Virtuous is saying, oh, did you just want to change Ron's name perhaps? Did you just spell it wrong or something like that? So this is one of those unique scenarios where I just did it wrong as I was kind of going through all my examples. So I'm gonna go ahead and just ignore this update. I don't actually wanna change Ron's name to Tammy. What I meant to do was just add Tammy. Well, Again. and even, even beyond ignoring, if instead of that, um, we simply click that X next to Ron, and then save and close or save and continue, that'll process this gift in a new way. Because the thing that we want to remember is, and this is where gift processing does get a little, I don't want to say odd, you know, we kind of cross the streams a little bit here. We know that gifts apply to context, right? We talk about that all the time in training and all of our documentation. And all of you have been using virtuous, you know, gifts apply to context. But when we match, we're actually matching to individuals. And of course, if you look at a gift, you'll see there's a field on there where it says there's a selected individual, right? So we know within a household, hey, who was it that was really behind that gift? And that's what that little green bubble indicates is who are we, who's the selected individual? Who did we match to? Because you've got especially in the case of a credit card, you've got a first name, right? You've got a last name. So we're matching to somebody. And so here, because the only differentiator was the first name, but the last name was the same and we had no other piece of information. The sim system simply said, hey, I've got someone here. Looks like they're a match, but uh, their first name seems to be different. Did you want to change their first name? It doesn't know that Tammy is not a nickname for Ron. That, that's why we have a human being doing these things. But if you deselect that match and save and continue or save and close, that tells the system, hey, no, I'm not matching to Ron. That prompts the system to then say, oh, well, then obviously you wanted to create a new person because this doesn't match anybody. And then we'll be able to add Tammy. Sorry, I had to, I had to, I had to speak. No. That's what I do. It's my thing. I'm surprised you stayed quiet so long, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still on vacation brain. I was actually out for a day or two. Uh, so, so that's why I'm, I'm slow. <laughs> but I love it because truly it is one of those pieces where you very well could have just been like, oops, that was my bad. I meant to do X, Y, and Z. You also have the scenario where like, no, no, virtuous. I'm not trying to change Ron's name to Tammy. That's not the nickname I was talking about. But all it takes is just a click to kind of re rewrite yourself and put your, your, uh, kind of feet going in the right direction. So from here, as soon as we deselected Ron and said, no, no, we're not attributing this gift to Ron, we have the option now to say, okay, we wanna add Tammy or perhaps, oops, I made another mistake, something like that. So we'll go ahead and add Tammy in. And we did a lot of gifts today. So we got, let's see, no more. Okay, perfect. So our eight gifts are now ready for import. So we've done a lot in all of these kind of gifts, a little, little bit of funky things with some of each of them. So we'll go ahead and toss those into import. And while that's running, I did wanna show you one other kind of fun thing. So all of this was done in one manual import, manual entry import. But what happens if it's a busy day of the year, perhaps it's something like Giving Tuesday, and you've got a lot of gifts coming in, and you really want to kind of break that down and do a couple bundles throughout the day. You can absolutely do your, your imports and kind of split them up or manually enter them as we go. But if you are using and giving integration, you have the ability, more tools, data management, gift transactions. Now I've got one kind of just open here. Go ahead and refresh this bad boy. Again, we've got all, oh, wrong click, data management, gift transactions. This is gonna show you gifts that are actively coming in right now. We haven't bundled them yet. Remember that Virtuous is gonna take all of your uh, kind of pending gifts and bundle them overnight. So you've got an import bundle ready to go in the morning. So you can just do that part at the very end where we had our three columns, our, our matches needed and all that jazz. But if during the day 
I'm just so excited. I cannot wait to do some gift entry. I want to bundle these and enter these right now. From that data management piece, you can actually just manually bundle gifts. Now, again, that's going to take gifts that were just created. And oh, Cornelius Hackle, Scott, thank you for doing that. If we have any uh, musical theater uh, fans on here, Hello Dolly is my least favorite. This is a very fun, uh, very official batch name. Gifts are cool. So we've taken all of those pending gifts. And if we were to hop over to our gift import, you'll notice this batch of gifts are cool is being queued right now. So it's just a fun way to kind of um, really, Virtuous is bundling and batching all of these for you every single night. It's how you kind of get your nice little bundles in here in the morning. But if it's a busy day, high gift volume, something like that, you can absolutely, or if you're going to take a, a page out of Scott's book, perhaps take a day or an afternoon off, <laughs> you know, bundle or, yeah, sorry, manually bundle those gifts and just kind of get ahead of them. So that's always an option that's just kind of tucked away because it's not something you typically need to do every day, but it's always an option. So I'm going to go ahead and pause there. We've entered quite a bit of gifts, uh, some of them a little kind of funky looking, but I want to just take a quick pause and, and see what kind of questions we have. While we uh, see if anybody has any, I do Let's want to see. pull up all of the, I've gone back into my uh, database to see all of the, the gifts that we added and we ended up with a bunch of new, or not a bunch, but a handful of new contacts, updated contacts. We've done a lot just in this gift entry. We're keeping our data clean. All of that kind of management of our data right in one kind of place. We ended up with new gifts. Uh, we didn't end up with any new pledges or, or recurring gifts, but these gifts are going to be payments for it was for Anne, um, and we had our one for the Gergich family. So there's all kinds of things that we've done just in this gift import. Okay, sorry. Now go ahead, Scott. <laughs> well, I was going to say, too, I, I want to point out that the updated contacts is still relatively new, right? That came in one of our recent releases. And so those of you that have been using the import tool for a long time know that uh, it would only show new contacts created. So if you were using this tool to add custom field values to existing contacts, or if you were making changes to contacts as part of your import process, you know, sometimes it looked like, geez, it didn't, it didn't work or didn't take or didn't go because it wouldn't list everybody that was updated, just those that were created, right? Especially if you use just the contact import, again, to you know, add a phone number, change a custom field value, whatever it is. But now we've got this tab so that you can see both. So if you have made changes to existing contact records, it'll show you that too. So, so that you, you can kind of confirm that, that what you did went through. Right um, Now we've had a couple of questions that are coming in. It looks like they're coming in through the chat instead of in the, the Q&A here. Um, and one uh, is from someone who's still a little bit early in the process here. Um, and looks like they are asking about the class for gifts. Um, so class is a, a sort of QuickBooks value, but not a virtuous value. And, and so if you're still working with the migration team, they'll work with you to determine, okay, how does class translate to virtuous for you? Is that part of the project structure? Is it, is it tracking the designation of those gifts? Is it related more to the campaign structure and the origin of those gifts? What's that being used to classify and, and where would that go? And then that can be mapped to QuickBooks. So, so that was one question that came in. Hopefully that's helpful. And then Stephanie, one for you here, there was a question about, can you do a gift query on the batch that you just imported? Ooh, a gift query on the batch that we just imported. What are we wanting to see? I just clicked the wrong button. Well, and I think this, uh, and I'm not sure, uh, uh, Everett, if you have some specifics that you want to see, let us know. It, it, it sounds like it's just a question of, hey, is it possible to, in a gift query, identify the gifts that you just imported? Oh, sure. So let's take a peek. 
I've got a gift query here. We can utilize the batch. We can also, probably should just kept the uh, gift piece up. That's the one I'm looking for. You, and I apologize, I think I just skipped right on past it. On earth. I'm losing it today, you guys. Lost it. Yes. Yes is the answer. We can find the batch that we just did. So we actually, and I apologize, it was in the wrong one, so I could do it over there, but uh, where we have a batch that contains, here's a great use of that kind of contains operator. If you have some kind of naming structure, or perhaps uh, your business kind of practice is to have a batch where if I'm entering it, I utilize, you know, the date I'm entering that batch, my initials, so everyone else on the team knows um, who it is, whatever that business practice is, you could say, I want to see all of the batches that contain some kind of value um, or something like that. So that's a way that you could do it right there. Yep. And that's where that batch identifier really does become so important. But yeah, once an import is complete, those gifts are in the database. You can query on them. They'll show up on contact records, all sorts of things. And if I want to get everything I just imported together in my hands, setting that batch identifier is important. Because remember, import ID, right? And, and that import identifier, the import name that you give it, those are not things I can query on. Those do not stay with the gift itself. They're just cosmetic more than anything for here, right? For us to find those imports. But if I want to find the gifts, Use that batch, that'll help you every time. Yeah. Um, so we had a question come in about what happens if you have a recurring gift, but you don't assign it or connect it to an existing recurring gift. So you have a recurring gift that a donor has, has you know, committed to and is paying on and you get a, a gift and you're just not, you don't attach it to that kind of as a payment to that recurring gift. Well, and I think the real question is what happens if you don't do it manually, right? Mm. You know, maybe could it happen on its own? <laughs> Absolutely. I do also want to just kind of show you. So in the, let me squish this in just a little bit. So Leslie Nope was one of ours where, if you remember, she had a bunch of recurring gifts that were all kind of past due. So to me, any data is always an indicator of something. There's something I can learn from it. Either it's time to check in with Leslie, we need to make a touch point with her, or perhaps there's something we're doing systematically where you know we really should be attaching her payments to these uh, recurring gifts or something like that. Everything is gonna tell us some kind of story regardless of what that story is. So on Leslie, because we hadn't been applying those gifts to her, or those payments, if you will, to her recurring gifts, you'll see that she has all of those kind of uh, past due ones. So she has a monthly recurring gift of $50 that's up to date. She also has a weekly recurring gift of $50 that's definitely past due. So you can always pop in and forgive past payments. So this is one of those pieces where, especially if you're going through the gift process, uh, gift entry process, and you, you know, miss it once, or um, you're not sure if it's a payment for a recurring gift or something like that. And or really, if Leslie really has just kind of been out of the loop and has forgotten that she's made this, you know, commitment to us, and we just need to make some touch points and get, you know, get her kind of back on track with this gift. Instead of keeping that kind of hanging out on her record, we can actually just go ahead and forgive these outstanding gifts if that's really kind of the, the business practice that we want to have happen. But anytime we're adding a gift to someone that has a recurring gift, things like the payment date, the amount, even the project that it's going to, those are all going to be identifiers or as part of gift entry, that's why you can see the past gifts when you're entering a new gift. Those are all really kind of telling to us to know 
this is a habit, this is a pattern that we're seeing with this donor. And don't forget too, so if we have a $50 gift from Leslie for the default project, so the project code is general fund, and that comes into the import tool, you don't have to select a recurring gift payment because Virtuous will automatically match that gift to that recurring gift payment. We look at who the contact is, we look at the amount of the gift, we look at the date of the gift, and, and actually primarily important, we look at the project on that gift to say, hey, does this match a payment we are expecting? And when we say, yes, look at that, we are expecting $50 from Leslie Nope for the general fund on uh, the, the 12th of June, then we say, okay, well, this is obviously their recurring payment, so let's match it up. And so those gifts, you know, and especially if you're doing gift processing now, they may already be going into the ready for import bucket and you don't even realize it because that matching logic exists to let that happen all on its own. I love it. And if it's something like Leslie is just, you know, an overachiever and she's just paying a few days early for something like that, that's when Virtus is still going to look at the amount and the project and, and kind of start to recognize a pattern. But the human side of things, you can always say, oh, yes, I'm sure that this is for her gift that we're expecting in three days, but it's Leslie. Of course, it's here early, you know, something like that. So that's kind of the, the beauty of the people using a project or a uh, um, a program like Virtuous, the logic works together. So that's kind of a cool piece. All right, what else? Oh, we're at time. Oh my gosh, it's already been yeah, an hour. Yeah, I was going to say, we're at time. And I, I think we got all the questions that were open here as they were coming in. I love it. Well, uh, this time next week, we're going to be meeting again uh, for the Virtuous Insider. We're going to look at some kind of responsive um, strategies, really talking a little bit about kind of segmentation and how we can listen to our donors and then, you know, make a decision and make a you know, a strategic choice that's going to help us segment them next time. So every time we're kind of refining and looking at at really the structure of how we do donor segmentation. So join us this time next week. Um, and then we are, the Virtuous Insider happens every Thursday. So I hope you'll join us, you know, every Thursday. Um, but next month, when we do our training session for the Virtuous Insider, uh, we're going to talk about receipts. So all of the fun of how we can kind of run our receipting um, in one click, one hit and they're out the door. Um, so join us then. All right, everybody have a wonderful rest of your Thursday. Thanks everybody.